So what is refraction? The bending of light when it goes from one medium to another. That's what refraction is. Are we good? Okay, another phenomenon that is very important to re recognize in sound. We did this before, right? That the speed of sound depends on temperature and it changes as temperature changes. So that means this speed of sound equation that we have has long-term impact. What happens to sound when it goes through temperature gradients? So during the daytime, warm air The ground heats up, right? And the top becomes cooler. So temperature is very funny. It actually heats up in increments. So you could literally draw, imagine temperature layers. So if you're making noise and you know that as, so will sound travel faster in warmer air or in cooler air? Warmer air, right? So sound travels more in warmer air. So the sound here will be faster than sound here, right? This will be slower. But because they were ejected at the same time, they have to travel together. So what is this process called? Bending, right? So the bending of sound will occur because sound travels at different speeds. So during the daytime, when warm air is below and cold air is above, sound will actually travel and be lost up. This is called adiabatic lapse rate. I'll be right, write that down. So the temperature, so here the temperature decreases with elevation. And that is called adiabatic lapse rate. Because of this temperature gradient as you go up, sounds will travel faster here, slower, slower, even slower here, right? As it goes up, it travels slower and slower and slower. And light, the sound actually gets bent away. On the other hand, during nighttime, what will happen? The surface of earth is cooler than the warmth air on the top, especially if you have clouds. Have you ever noticed when it's cloudy, it doesn't get that cool? And when it's a clear sky, it gets really cold at nighttime? Okay, if you haven't noticed that, notice that next time. So if it's really cold and cloudy, the cloud maintain the heat inside. Oh, on a hot day, have you ever opened your car when it's been in the sun? What do you experience? Blast of heat that comes towards you? Greenhouse effect. Same thing happens when you have clouds. When you have clouds at the top, they maintain the heat inside. But if it's a cloudy sky, you would think it would be warmer, right? Because there's no clouds but actually the clouds cause the cover that keep the heat in. If there's no clouds, the heat just goes up, right? Because hot air has more kinetic energy. Molecules move faster. So when molecules move faster, they don't want to be lazy. They want to rise up. It's the same thing in, uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed that. Like in warmer climates, people put ceiling fans to regulate the heat in the room. And uh, in parts of the world, like where I come from, we usually construct houses because it's very hot. We usually construct houses that are that have really tall ceilings. And then they have like a little window at the top that with an exhaust that takes the heat away. Because all hot air will rise and you want that heat to go away. Okay, anyway, so opposite effect happens during nighttime, cool air, on the surface, warm air at the top will cause the same temperature gradient, but 
in the other direction. So sound will travel faster at the top and slower at the bottom. So sound will be deflected down. And that temperature, particular temperature gradient is called atmospheric temperature inversion where warm air is here and cool air is at the bottom. And sound will travel towards the earth. Have you ever noticed that over water too? Like if you ever yell at somebody over water and they're like, I, we can't hear you. They actually can't. If the distance is far enough, sound will bend down because the water surface is cooler than at the top. So you think you're yelling at them at level. So what should you do? Yell up so it comes down. Exactly. Woo <laughs> okay. Um, oh yeah, there it is. Say, sound over water, right? It travels faster. This will be cooler cooler, and this would be warmer. Which also is a very interesting phenomenon. During thunderstorms, there are times when you can see the lightning, but you don't hear the thunder. And you keep waiting to hear the thunder. Sometimes you do hear the thunder and the lightning, right? And they tell you to count, right? Has there anyone done that? Like they tell you to count? the number of seconds between you seeing the light and you know, hearing the thunder, that's how many miles away it is. But there are times when there is a temperature gradient, especially if your thunder and lightning is about 14 miles or more, what happens is imagine if this is the cloud, this is cold and this is say warm or warmer, and thunder and lightning started here. And imagine you're standing here and you see the lightning, but you don't hear the thunder. Do you know what's going on? It's exactly the same phenomenon. There's a temperature gradient in the middle. And when the sound starts, it comes down, but then it gets deflected back up. And you, if you're in the region, here will not hear the thunder. And that is called shadow. And also happens the same on the other end. All because sound travels differently when temperature changes. It actually deflects back up. I mean, this is an over-exaggeration, right? You guys all realize that, right? This is actually not drawn to scale. But a good um, rule of thumb is if you see the lightning and you don't hear the thunder, it's probably 14 miles or more away from you. So you're pretty safe. Give or take. Like it could be 14, 15, you know, but give or take, you're about 14 miles away especially if it's happening at the beginning of the thunderstorm, because there's definitely a temperature gradient when that happens. Okay, the other one is the sound of refraction into the wind or against the wind. You wouldn't think about it that way, but if it's windy and you are either talking with the wind or you're talking against the wind, the refraction happens in that situation as well. So if you're talking with the wind, with the wind, the sound will be refracted towards the ground. And the sound and it will be carried with the wind. further than if you were just yelling. If you try to go against the wind,
it will be refracted up. And the sound will be lost. And if you were under ocean, and you were quite a bit under the water, you will see the same gradient of temperature. If the fish was quite a bit deep in the water, the temperature goes down with depth. So as you go further and further, temperature decreases. So what do we know about when temperature decreases? Sound is lower. So what, the deflection will be upwards or downwards? Downwards, right? And so if, a, uh, if this, this um, fish, which is very, very far, speaks, it will be deflected down. So the next fish, even though they, they're like far away, they will still be able to hear them over thousands of miles. Well, not that, hundreds of miles. Long distance. I don't know exactly how long. And then, so fishes use this phenomenon to speak over long distances. On the other hand, if there was, say, a submarine here. Oh, submarines. Is that a good submarine? Will that submarine hear the signal? No. It will cause the same shadow regions to form underwater just like they did for the thunderstorm, remember? So because of that sound, the sound barriers. And that's why sometimes when submarines are like kind of close to the surface, they don't hear, they can't tell through sonar how far another enemy ship is. They have to, they have to go down in order to figure out where the sound is coming from. So fascinating and all because sound travels differently under different temperature conditions. So cool. And the fascinating thing is, I don't think any of the whales study physics the last time I checked, but they still use this phenomenon. 